Eloise by K. Thompson. Drawings by Hilary Knight. I am Eloise. I am six. I am a city child. I live at the plaza. There is a lobby which is enormously large with marble pillars and ladies in it and a revolving door with P on it. I spend an awful lot of time in the lobby. For instance, every day I have to go to the desk clerk and see what's happening there. Then I stop by the mail desk to see if they have any stamps. Then I go to the house phones and make several calls to see if anybody's in. The bell captain knows who I am. If there is a lot of luggage trying to get in the elevator and these people are all in a crowd and smoking and from out of town or something, I edge into the middle of it and I lose my skate key. I am a nuisance in the lobby. Mr. Salomone said so. He is the manager. I always say, good morning, Mr. Salomone. And he always says, good morning, Eloise. My mother knows the owner. I live on the top floor. Of course, I am apt to be on any floor at any time. And if I want to go anywhere, I simply take the elevator. For instance, if I happen to be on the second floor, I just press that button until it comes up. And as soon as that door is open, I get in and say, fifth floor, please. And when those doors clank shut, we ride up and I get out on the fifth floor. And as soon as that elevator is out of sight, I skibble up those stairs to the eighth floor. And then I press that button. And when that same elevator comes up, and as soon as that door is open, I get in and say, 15th floor, please. And then when those doors clank shut, we ride up and I get out on the 15th floor. And as soon as that elevator is out of sight, I skibble down to the 12th floor and press that button. And when that same elevator comes up and those doors open, I say, the lobby, please. And then those doors clank shut and we ride down without saying absolutely one word. And then I get in to the next elevator and go all the way up. I live down at the end of the hall. Sometimes I take two sticks and skitter them along the walls. And when I run down the hall, I slump my feet against the woodwork, which is very good for scuffing and noise. Sometimes I slump my skates if I want to make a really loud and terrible racket. We have a buzzer on our front door. I always lean on it. That's how Nanny knows it's me, Eloise. Nanny is my nurse. She wears tissue paper in her dress and you can hear it. She is English and has eight hairpins made out of bones. She says that's all she needs in this life for Lord's sake. Nanny says she would rather I didn't talk, talk, talk all the time. She always says everything three times, like, Eloise, you can't, can't, can't. Sometimes I hit her on the ankle with a tassel. She is my mostly companion. I have my own room. It has a coat rack, which is as large as me. I have a dog that looks like a cat. His name is Weenie. 
Sometimes I put sunglasses on him. Then I have to scratch his back with a wire hanger. I have a turtle. His name is Skipperdy. He eats raisins and wears sneakers. The Plaza is the only hotel in New York that will allow you to have a turtle. Skipperdy and me, we always know it's morning because Weenie breathes in our face and kisses us. The absolutely first thing I have to do is braid Skipperdy's ears. Otherwise, he gets cross and develops a rash. Nanny gets up feeling tired, 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 and puts on her kimono and skibbles over to slam those windows down shut so that we don't freeze, freeze, freeze. Then she stretches her muscles and feels fresh, fresh, fresh. Nanny yawns out loud. Then I pick up the telephone and call room service. Ooh, I absolutely love room service. They always know it's me and they say, yes, Eloise. And I always say, hello, this is me, Eloise. And would you kindly send one roast beef bone one raisin and seven spoons to the top floor and charge it, please. Thank you very much. Then I hang up and look at the ceiling for a while and think of a way to get a present. I usually yawn out loud several times. Then Nanny gives the signal and Weenie and Skipperdy and me we skibble out of bed as fast as everly we can, and Nanny wraps us in our robe and holds us tight, and I pat her on the, her boto, which is large. Then we have to do our morning duties and laugh and sing. London, from bottom to top, is Zup. The keeper in the shop is Zup, and even Mrs. Mop is Zup. Oh, what a lovely morning! In Trafalgar Square, the Bobbies zup. In Piccadilly, the Nippies zup. In Covent Garden, the Clippies zup. Oh, what a lovely morning. We're zup and we've got to be jolly clean from head to toe and in between. Zup, good morning and how've you been? Oh, what a lovely morning. The Royal Navy is up is zup. Buckingham Palace is up is up, and even the BBC is up. Oh, what a lovely, oh, what a lovely, oh, what a lovely morning. Oh, I just love Nanny. I absolutely do. While I'm brushing my teeth, there is this pigeon who is always hanging around our bathroom window, and he does absolutely nothing but coo. He is fat and grisly, and I holler at him, and he flies over to the Sherry Netherland for a while to see what they're up to. Weenie and me weigh 36. Nanny weighs 18 stones. Skipperdy weighs absolutely nothing at all unless he has his sneakers on. Then, of course, he weighs half. Then Nanny puts on her corset, which is enormously large, but which is very good for her back. Kleenex makes a very good hat. When we are clean, we skibble in our scuffs to the kitchen, and there is Renee with room service. Renee always says, Bonjour, Eloise. Voici votre petit déjeuner. Nanny always says, My, 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 doesn't that look good? And I always say, Bonjour, Renee. Merci. And charge it, please. Nanny has Irish bacon, 
which reminds her of her brother. You have to eat oatmeal or you'll dry up. Anybody knows that. Nanny likes her coffee hot, hot, hot. An egg cup makes a very good hat. I have two dolls, which is enough. Their names are Sabine and Sailor. Sabine is a rag doll, and she has absolutely no face at all, partially because she came from Jamaica by Air Express. Otherwise, she has shoe button eyes and two right legs. She is rather unusual. Sailor is a very large doll and has a hard head and no arms. She was in the most terriblest accident, and she bleeded so hard she almost choked in the night, and this ambulance came and took her to this hospital, and it was an emergency, and they had to give her all this terribly dark medicine and a lot of band-aids, and when she came back home, she was weak, 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 and had to take cod liver oil. I gave her a strawberry leaf from under my grapefruit for not whimpering, and Weenie licked her face. They have to have a teaspoon of water every hour or so, so you can see they are an extremely lot of extra work. Here's what I like to do. Make things up. Here's what I can do. Chew gum. Write. Spell. Stand on my head for the longest amount of time. Stand on my toes. Get dizzy and fall down. Make a terrible face. And here's the thing of it. Most of the time, I'm on the telephone. My day is rather full. I have to call the valet and tell him to get up here and pick up my sneakers to be cleaned and pressed and have them back for sure without fail. Then I have to play the piano and look in the mirror for a while. Then I have to open and close the door for a while, and as soon as I hear talking and laughing, I skitter out and run down the hall. And if there is an open door, I have to walk in and pretend I'm an orphan. And sometimes I limp and sort of bend to the side and look sort of sad in between the arms, and they give me a piece of melon or something. Then I roam around the halls. Then I have to scurry down to the 10th floor to adjust those thermostats in case anyone needs it. If there's a fire on the 6th floor, I know how to fix it. Then I have to hide and see what those hotel officers are up to. All they do is walk and talk. I have never been arrested. Then I have to hurry back to the top floor. Our day maid's name is Joanna. She has earrings with garnets and is going to take her social security to Bavaria on her birthday. One time she saw this man in this hairnet and he bawled her out for taking his razor blades. I have to help her put on those pillowcases or she'll never be through by four for Lord's sake. She has to be through by four. Then I have to go around to that service elevator on the sixth floor and see what everybody's thrown away and if I want it or not, like ribbon or something like that. Then I have to go down to help the switchboard operators in case there are any DAs and there has to be some sort of message taken or something like that. If there is an exit sign, 
I always have to go into it because there might be a mattress in there and I can lie down on it and get some rest so I can carry on for Lord's sake. Oh, my Lord, I am absolutely so busy. I don't know how I can possibly get everything done. Then I have to hop around for a while. I have lunch at the Palm Court, if it is too rainy, and see Thomas. We are both rather fond of talking, and he gives me Googlehofen. Thomas has a son in the Marines who got married on a shoestring. Thomas has a Corvette. I always go in the Persian room after four to see my friend Bill. He is a busboy in the night and goes to school in the day, and his eyes water. Here's where he's been. Madrid. He's been where I've been. Boiler room. Then I scamper to the terrace room where those debutantes are prancing around. Then I have to skibble into the Baroque room because sometimes there is this chalk and there is this pitcher with ice water in it and you should see the cigar smoke left over from a General Motors meeting. Oh my Lord! Then I have to help the busboys and waiters get set up in the crystal room. They always wait until the last second for Lord's sake and then we have to rush our feet off. I go to all the weddings in the white and gold room and I usually stay for the reception. There are absolutely nothing but rooms in the plaza. Sometimes if they are having this enormous affair in the grand ballroom, I get there early to help Joe set up the lights in the ceiling and before anybody gets there, we just scamper up this ladder and hide up there in those holes. Oh my Lord, is it ever swelteringly hot up there. I always wear my sun visor. I am all over the hotel. Half the time I am lost, but mostly I am on the first floor because that's where catering is. So I have to go down there every day for at least three hours and sometimes I have to go at night. Oh my Lord, do they ever have a lot of things going on down there. Altogether, I have been to 56 affairs, including Halloween. There is this oak room, which is to the right if you want to have a broken mint or something like that. And you have to go downstairs to the rendezvous room, which is very good for hiding over a long period of time and for doing a tour jeté or so. The package room has all these packages in it, and sometimes I have to help them lift those heavy boxes and look for small packages that might be for me, Eloise. Sometimes I go into the men's room, which is very good for playing railroad station or something like that. Every Wednesday, I have to go to the barber shop and have Vincent shape my hair. He does absolutely nothing but talk and swiggles me around in that chair and hurts my neck with that whisk broom. Sometimes I sklunk him in the kneecap. Vincent says that I, if I am not careful, I am not going to have a hair on my head by the time I'm seven, for Lord's sake. Getting bored is not allowed. Sometimes I comb my hair with a fork. Sometimes I wear my arm in a sling. Sometimes I put a rubber band on the end of my nose. Toe shoes make very good ears. Sometimes I wear them to lunch. Here's what I like to do. Pretend. 
Sometimes I am a mother with 40 children. Sometimes I am a giant with fire coming out of my hair. Sometimes I get terribly sick and have to be waited on. Sometimes I get so sick my head falls over and is wobbling until it is loose. Then we have to call my mother long distance and charge it. My mother is 30 and has a charge account at Bergdorf's. She wears a three and a half shoe. I put a large cabbage leaf on my head when I have a headache. It makes a very good hat. My mother knows Coco Chanel. She goes to Europe and to Paris and sends for me if there's some sun. I am always packed in case I have to leave on TWA at a moment's notice or something like that. My mother has AT&T stock and she knows an ad man, whatever that is. Sometimes my mother goes to Virginia with her lawyer. He has an office on Madison Avenue. He has already had the whooping cough and the measles. Sometimes I give him rubber candy. He is absolutely so dumb he eats it. Sometimes he brings me a present whether I deserve it or not. I usually do. Here's what he likes. Martinis. Here's what I like. Dandelions. Sometimes I have a temper fit, but not very often. I absolutely dislike school, so Philip is my tutor. He goes to Andover. My mother knows the dean. He wears red garters and is boring, boring, boring. When we have our French lesson, he reads in French about La Petite Cousine de Marie and her jardin, and sometimes I listen to him, but not very often. Here's what makes Philip angry. He says, Allures, nous commencerons. And I say, Allures, nous commencerons. And he says, Shall we settle down, Eloise? And I say, Shall we settle down, Eloise? And he says, That's quite enough, Eloise. And I say, That's quite enough, Eloise. And he says, I mean it, Eloise. And I say, I mean it, Eloise right back at him, and he looks at me with fiercely eyes, and I look right back at him with fiercely eyes, and then he says, that will do, Eloise, and I say, that will do, Eloise, and then he shouts, Eloise, I mean it, and then I shout, Eloise, I mean it, right after him, and then he gets madder and says, stop it at once, Eloise, and then I say, stop it at once, Eloise, And then he stands up and says, very well, Eloise. And then I stand up and say, very well, Eloise. And then he walks around the room. And then I walk around the room. And then he screams, nanny. And I, then I scream, nanny. And nanny comes in yelling, no, 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 Eloise. And she claps her hands and Skipperty and me, we skibble over and hide behind the television or fall dead behind a hidden door. And then nanny puts her arm around Philip and calls room service and says, send three of everything, please. And when the waiter brings the check, Nanny signs my mother's name. And I simply tell him to charge it, please, and thank you very much. Then I do a cartwheel. Philip is always glad to go home. Every night, I have to call room service to send up that menu so we can order our dinner for Lord's sake. I always have to read it for a few seconds or so. Then I just say, I'll have the planked medallion of beef tenderloin with fresh vegetables maison, please, and two raisins, one strawberry leaf, and one clams in season, s'il vous plaît, and charge it, please. Thank you very much. Oh, I absolutely love room service. The night maid's name is Lily. She married the engineer of the subway and cut her hair, but I think she's sorry. She gives us extra pillowcases and soap. 
Once there was this most terrible storm that came up, and it rained, and all this thunder was clumping itself into this water, and all these people were drowning without air. Absolutely no one was saved. Paper cups are very good for talking to Mars. TV is in the drawing room. I always watch it with my parasol in case there's some sort of glare. And oh my lord, when it's fight night, Nanny is absolutely wild and we have to scamper into our places and get ready. And Nanny has to find her players and I have to get my binoculars and call room service and order three Pilsner beers for Nanny and one meringue glacé for me, Eloise. And charge it please. Thank you very much. Here's what I hate. Howdy doody. Ooh, I absolutely love TV. Every night when it's time to go to bed, Nanny yawns out loud and says she is tired, tired, tired. I make as much noise as I possibly can, like turning on the phonograph real loud and hollering a lot. Then I have to brush Nanny's hair for her. And then we both yawn out loud and get into our pajamas. Then I have to put on my don't disturb sign and get Skipper D and Weenie and me all tucked in. And then Nanny opens the windows enormously wide so we can have air, air, air. Then she turns out the light. Nanny has a mole. Sometimes we go to sleep right away, but not very often. Sometimes Weenie and Skipperty and me, we get out of bed and go into that closet and look around for a while. And when we get in there, there is a ca this cave and it is so dark in there that it's absolutely black. And there is this big bug in there that has those enormously large feathers and he picks us up by our necks and sclanks us around in his paws and carries us down into this deep well that is all filled with tigers and lions and birds of prey and they eat us up raw and step on us and stamp their feet on us and absolutely rank us and we have to run for our lives and drag each other on our stomach and scrape our face along the side until we are absolutely breathing and stretching our arms to reach that closet door barely in time and our heart is beating and we have to wake nanny with a flashlight in her face to save us and put witch hazel and cotton on all of our toenails. And Nanny has to get up and pamper me and spoil me for a while while I am out of my head with fever and pain. After all, I am only six. Oh, my Lord, there's so much to do. Tomorrow, I think I'll pour a pitcher of water down the mail chute.